ecosystems in Malaysia are under intense pressure from deforestation and degradation. It's been pretty bleak. We're going through a, right now a mass extinction where we are losing so much species globally that it was similar to when we lost the dinosaurs. What happened then was a major impact that killed all of them. But right now it's our human lifestyle which is slowly killing biodiversity. Like for example in the island of Borneo, only about 10% of uh, the forest remains as pristine. So almost all of these forested areas have had some road or has had some logging going on in them. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to safeguard and build up that population at a state-to-state -state strategy basis. The biggest challenge is actually getting people aware of how complicated and complex our forests are. So every single restoration project must be tailor-made, designed from scratch. We're not just planting trees for the sake of planting trees, but we're planting trees to protect them, to build habitat, to regrow the ecosystem. Our core initiative at TRCRC is our living collections, where we are collecting all different endangered species from those particular regions, furthermore reintroducing them into the wild when they're ready. We conserve a range of different um, species, predominantly the dipterocarps like the chengals, the marantis, the kerwings and, and the sarayas. A lot of times it's gone to quite cheap woody material, plywood and sawn timber. They price because of their volume. You can get a lot from a single tree and that's why they're so valuable. Some of the species that we discovered that were threatened actually stem way back even from just past our independence. So there's this dipterocarp called kerwing jarang in Sabah the most critically endangered diplocarp left in the wild. They are only known to be about three to four adults left and about five to six juveniles. They have not been able to produce seeds because the population may be too small, over predated. And once we lose a species, it's going to take them millions of years, thousands of years to fill up that niche. Project Bernie was a project that we developed to track and trace seed collecting and restoration projects that we manage. Whenever we're out in the field, we're collecting data. Whenever we're in the nursery, we are collecting data. And every time we plant them out, we're also collecting data. And so what we want to do is kind of like have a seamless mobile application that can assist us with that. With the support from Maxis, we hope to have geotagging uh, solutions so that the tree location can be identified. And after that, when we then go back to our base, then goes and becomes uploaded into the cloud so that we can then be contributing it and managing that data from a central program. The bigger picture is then once we have this application, we will streamline a lot of our processes from processes on the ground to processes of fundraising to processes of planting the trees out. When it came to Maxis and the awards, we saw many, many different opportunities. We are now able to get our message known to the masses and from there leverage on you know, some of their solutions such as the e-commerce uh, platform. Basically, we can then reach a larger audience in terms of funding some of our projects we need and to make sure that the funding can come to the where it's needed the most. So the plan is first to test it out and then partnering with Orang Aslis and including them into supply chain of restoration projects. They are creating a more sustainable livelihood, you know, rather than an extractive livelihood. In the long run, we would basically be able to see a difference or an impact the minute the application is being used. We can then also just focus on what we do best and automate the rest of the tedious work that we rather have technology to assist us with.